Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Crazy Commute. It's made by Sheep Tree Studios by Reina and Daniel Lawhead. It's for 3 to 5 players, ages 7 and up, and 15 to 30 minutes to play the game. In the game Crazy Commute, you're going to be choosing a different type of driver. Maybe you're going to be the zombie tired commuter, or the vampire on the go makeup artist driver. And there's one, uh, there's five different types of those guys. Uh, there's also going to be deck cards, which you're going to be playing back and forth in kind of this attacking style way, while you're driving around in traffic trying to pass people up. Uh, basically, the objective is to win duels, road duels, mind you, as well as winning duels against the deck if you're already in front, and avoiding having to deal with all these nasty event cards that will happen throughout the game. All right, well, let me go ahead and share the game. Okay, so here we have Crazy Commute, and as you can see, you got a deck of cards, you're going to have basically these guys here, it's going to be their main type of card, and then uh, what is going to counter that card here, right? So, when somebody plays a certain card, they're going to need another card, the opponent is going to need another card to play to counter the card that has been played. I'll explain all that in a second. You're also going to have these cards here, these are the event cards that will stop certain cards from being played to begin with, or maybe just uh, have different ways in which the game is going to be played. Uh, these guys here are just the characters you're going to be choosing from. It doesn't matter which one you choose, it's just so that you have one as they move up and down the battlefield. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and choose one. I will pick the werewolf and we'll have our friend pick the uh, vampire and somebody else pick the zombie and we'll take these guys away. These guys are all going to get shuffled into the deck in some way, make sure it's all good and shuffled, and then deal out five cards for each player. Once everybody has been dealt a hand of five cards, which are all going to be basically these things here, right? You are then going to begin. Now, to begin the game, it's pretty simple. I'll move these guys up here. You're going to take all of the event cards and shuffle them into the deck because you're not supposed to ever start with an event. And so if you wanted to, you could choose to deal them out first, and then whenever somebody gets an event, just put them back into the deck until you have five cards. That's another way to do it. The person who goes first, which is going to be based on a coin flip or whatever, whoever drove a car last, is going to start the game up in front like this, and these two will start right there. And then the player uh, is going to be able to draw a card and they're going to pass. Now, you're always going to want to be in front. In front is more likely going to give you points. The other way to give you points is to win a duel. So the next player, we'll say, is the vampire. We'll go clockwise, so it's this hand right here. She has uh, two options after she draws a card. So she draws a card, begin her turn, and now she can simply A, try to duel the player ahead of her, or B, discard a card from her hand and draw two. If you don't have a good array of cards in your hand, you might want to do that. But let's say she is feeling feisty, and she's going to try and duel the zombie. Be. So now she's dueling him. He will then select a card defensively to play against her. Rocket Fuel. And then she has to play a canned cop. Does she have one? She does. So she'll play the canned cop. He will then go ahead and try and play a, an oil slick. Oh, he doesn't have one. If you don't have one, you lose the duel. Whenever uh, you win a duel, you get the last card played as a point, and the other cards go to the graveyard. Also, when you win a duel, you go up. If you lose a duel, you either stay in your, the same place, or if you're dueling the deck, you can lose and go all the way down. So now she is ahead, and uh, now you have the order of the players, right? Now, after you're done, if you have less than five cards in your hand, you're going to draw up, and the cards next to you are going to be your points. You need seven of them to win the game. The next player can then go ahead, and I think that's the werewolf here, and he's only able to challenge the player in front of him, so the zombie, right, who had just been dueled. So the werewolf is gonna look at his hand, he has this card here, which is interesting. This is a wild card that can't be played to begin a duel, but can't be blocked. So it's a very useful card. There's only one in the deck. But let's say he wants to go ahead and uh, challenge. He wants to draw a card, begin his turn, and then he will go ahead and start with the oil slick. Dehydrated cones is what is needed to stop him. And the, uh, the zombie player, oh no, this is the zombie player, sorry. The zombie player does not have dehydrated cones, in which case he will get his point and he will move up in the rankings. Uh, moving on uh, to the next player here is going to be the zombie, and the zombie will once again draw his card, and he's going to challenge the werewolf. He will choose a card from his hand to play, maybe he'll play Rocket Fuel, and the werewolf will then look, and Rocket Fuel is beaten by Canned Cop, so we have a Canned Cop there. Bottled Oil Slick, there we go. Now it's a game right here, Dehydrated Cones. Nope, no Dehydrated Cones, but he can play his Invisible Paint, which instantly stops and gives him one more point and sends the poor zombie back down again and the werewolf is in control of the game still. 
and they're going to continue doing this. And as you win their duels, you're going to get bonus points. The last thing I can talk about here as well is that the vampire is fighting by herself. She's going to get to draw a card on her turn. And oh, there's an event that happens. Rocket fuel may not be used to begin a duel. And so you're going to draw a card additionally. Whenever you draw one of these guys, you simply play it down on top of the one that was there previously and then draw an additional card. Um, so now she has to duel the deck. So she drew a card from the beginning of begin the turn with, and now she's dueling the deck. Oh, another event, so it just goes there. Let's see if we can duel one. So she's going to duel the dehydrated cones. Does she have springs? She does. So she instantly will win, and that will give her one point. So the player who gets to seven first is going to be the winner of the game Crazy Commute, and that is the way to play the game. All right, so that's the basic way to play the game. I think I might have messed up a little bit. Instead of actually, whenever you challenge somebody, they play their card first, and then you are going to try and counter them to win, and it goes a back and forth thing. But you're never going to play the card when you challenge. It's always going to be the defender that chooses their card first, and that's very important. Don't mess it up like I did. Also, remember, seven points is the way to victory. You can do get it from being the deck or beating other players. And getting in front is obviously going to be that way to gain a lot of bonus points, because it's really easy to just have to beat one card as opposed to beating multiple cards and dealing with an actual opponent. But staying in the lead is very, very challenging. The event cards are interesting as well. There's a plethora of them. Some of them will allow you to duel players that are not just in front of you, but at the front of the deck. Other ones, a lot of them are going to be, uh, let's see here, Rocket Fuel can't start a duel, right? Or Dehydrated Cones can't start a duel. That, that's the basic uh, aspect of the event cards. However, yet ones like this, Drivers may start to duel... Uh, to pass a driver of their choosing. That's what I was talking about previously. There's a couple other little game changers in here. Um, drivers may not let other players pass. If targeted, they have to start a duel. And why is because if you choose to not duel, so somebody wants to duel you and you don't think you can beat them, you can choose to not duel, let them pass you up, and then you give them a card from your hand. I think it's at random. But that is the basic idea of the game Crazy Commute. Let me tell you what I think about it. So Crazy Commute is a game that is themed based around commuting through traffic. And as you know, going back and forth in traffic is kind of a crazy thing that happens a lot, especially when you're slow. And hey, I live near LA, so I understand that you're going to be passing people up and there's going to be a lot of craziness. And it kind of simulates that aspect of almost the game of the movie Office Space in a way, because you're just like, ah, I can never seem to stay ahead. But, uh... That's pretty cool, right? It's a pretty cool little theme. So I do enjoy the theme for what it's worth. Uh, the artwork, I think, is is passable. It's, it's not terrible. It's not amazing either. It's kind of somewhere in the middle there. But um, it is kind of interesting, the fact that they have all the drivers in some kind of, like, mythical uh, theme. The vampire is the girl who puts on too much makeup while she's driving, and the werewolf is the after-dark partier, and the zombie is the tired commuter. He's just, like, in the morning or at super late night trying to get his work done or whatever. So that works pretty well. Uh, the game is basically... Playing cards back and forth, trying to remember what's in your player, other players' hands, while playing, trying to play cards that you think are going to uh, give you points. All right, so I know he doesn't have this, so I'm going to play this card, and oh, or maybe I'm going to play this card in defense because I have three other cards that will back that up. Once he plays, if he played, if I play one and he plays two, I can then play three and he can play four, but I'll still have five there as a backup. So you're trying to kind of. Com com combine your cards to where you're playing them to defend yourself from losing your space in line because staying up and ahead is very very important in this game uh, for some reason when I first started playing this game I was playing with two players I just didn't look at it and it's actually a three player game and for good reason because this game is awful in two players and I was feeling really bad so I was going to have to explain, explain how terrible the game is two players but it's not for two players at all and for good reason and uh, yeah it's a three to five player game so or maybe even three to six player game right it, three to five player game so once I added that third player and then even that fourth player the game was way way more fun and enjoyable I did enjoy the game going back and forth with players it it was very neck and neck, which I didn't actually expect. I thought once somebody was going to be in front, the guy in back was never going to get up there. I was wrong. It was pretty, pretty intense. And I thought I was going to win for a second, and then I thought somebody else was going to win. And then we all ended up with six points, and then bam, somebody won after challenging. Uh, I got a couple negatives. Obviously, the artwork's kind of eh. And then also, you might end up drawing a lot of cards of the same type, same variety. You might get like three tire, swing, tire springs in your hand, and that's not going to be very beneficial. Um... It's not like super in depth, like as far as thinking or strategy. So if you're looking for something like that, this is probably not the game for you. You're literally just the best way you can go about strategy wise in this game is trying to keep cards in your hand that are different and being able to combine them in certain ways to either defend yourself or make sure that you're able to defeat the top card of the deck if you're in the front. 
the event cards are cool, but usually aren't used, aren't, aren't that important all that much, especially when you can't play a card uh, from your hand. Usually you have at least one or two other cards. It can kind of stuff you up once in a while when you know your opponent doesn't have traffic cones and you have the card to play to you know to play that on them but now you're not allowed to because of the events or being able to get up ahead in, in the in the front i think that's a pretty cool event so there's some of them that are pretty cool and some of them are just like almost not really noticeable but overall crazy commute's fun i really did enjoy it once i started playing with three four and even five players i had a good amount of fun and i think you are going to know if you're going to enjoy this game as well but uh yeah so go ahead and check it out in the description below if it sounds like something you're interested in